So this afternoon we want to talk about Archives West Midlands, which is a new organisation which brings together archive services across the region. Um, we had a well-established sort of uh, mode of working regionally, which dated back um, to really the early 2000s, where we had a, a regional archive forum. Before that, we'd had a regional archive council. Those of you who are old enough to remember Resource and MLA, we were supported by those bodies. Um, in 2009, we merged what was the regional archive forum with a, a, a more informal group that uh, just supported the heads of archive services. Um, and after MLA was dissolved in 2012, we managed to carry on and we did maintain links with um, the museums and library sector. I think within the West Midlands, we were always quite a coherent region and a quite ge geographically um, quite compact, which probably helped us uh, in our sort of tradition of working together. And we had delivered funding projects previously um, under the Access to Archives scheme, um, which again, some of you may, may recollect. But we, we decided that we really did need to develop our structures and how we work together. Um, and we, discussed, we started talking with TNA in 2014 about a collaborative project for the West Midlands to, ex to explore ways of working together more strategically uh, and addressing some of the challenges that we faced with reducing budgets. We were able to secure funding from the National Archives um, with the agreement that we would sort of match fund that. Um, and we brought in uh, external consultants um, to really get us to see what, what do we, where did we want to go and where did we, you know, where, what was our future direction. Um, we established a development board uh, and we were lucky enough to get a senior officer to uh, sponsor the project. And that's Janine Cox, who's the Commissioner for Culture and Leisure within Staffordshire County Council. Um, and she's, her drive and experience were really crucial in helping us uh, move things forward. Um, she had just completed two years as president of the Society of Chief Librarians when she came on board. Um, so her sort of drive and high profile was really important to us. We developed a, a, a project brief and um, following a tender process, we appointed Tom Forrest and Kevin Bolton, who I see is in the audience, um, as uh, consultants to help us. Um, and we had a number of workshops um, which really brought everybody together to try and um, get us thinking about how did we want to work together. We created a prospectus, which was a document um, demonstrating what we wanted to do and also um, with uh, aims for the future. And we renamed ourselves as Archives uh, West Midlands in 2016, and we had a formal launch in June of that year. The first sort of funded project that we've put to, we put together um, was called Strong Rooms. Um, this was funded by the Arts Council, and it was a, a really unique and exciting sort of fusion of archives and arts. Um, we worked with a globally, globally renowned street artist called Muhammad Ali, um, and the project really, as it says there, it aimed to get archives onto the streets uh, and into people's lives in new, a new way. Um, it mixed graffiti art and archives and really sort of challenged the perceptions of archives. Um, the project altogether uh, toured uh, four locations, Rugby, Coventry, Dudley and Worcester. Uh, we had about 10,000 on-site visitors and over 900,000 who accessed the project online. And there's still um, plenty of information on the, on the website if you're interested in that. I think what it did show us as well was just the capacity that we needed to work together on projects. Um, it did take a huge amount of work to put that whole, that whole project together. And because we were a constituted body, but we didn't have a formal structure, uh, one of our partners, uh, Warwickshire County Council, they had to put in the funding bid. So that made us realise that we really needed to sort of change our constitution. So following on from that, we've actually become a charitable incorporated organisation um, since July of last year. Um, and as you can see, our aims there are really to 
promote um, and encourage high standards across the archive profession. Um, we've got particular areas that we want to look at, digital preservation, which we obviously heard a huge amount in the conference over the last few days, and Joe will talk more about that. And as I say, we really wanted to have this aspiration to develop support, support and fund regional projects, and that was part of the drive for us becoming a charitable organisation. Um, within the, the membership, um, we do have a subscription model, which is perhaps a little unusual within archives, so we do ask our full members to pay £500 a year, and we do ask that all those members are either an accredited archive service or are seeking accreditation. We've got a really good range of trustees. Um, we've got 12 in total, as you can see there, um, and that includes Janine Cox, a number of heads of archive services, but we've also got representatives from business, academic, and from uh, archive consultants. When we did the slides, we had 15 full members, but we've actually had one more um, since then, so we've now got 16 full members within Archives West Midlands. Um, the vast majority of the local authority services within the West Midlands are members, and we're now moving to try and get more specialist repositories, universities, and so on to join us. So I'll just hand over to Joanne now. So building on the success of the prospectus that we, we had, which was a brochure which we used to launch the organisation Archives West Midlands, we decided that we would have a, an annual review, and that's a copy of the annual review. We have some still available um, at our, our table, and it is available on the website. And the purpose of that was really to highlight our achievements to date um, and to use it uh, as an advocacy tool. And we decided, again, to drawing on um, some Janine's experience from working uh, as president of the Society of Chief Librarians. She was really keen that we got someone external to help us write that, uh, someone who was, who's an ex-journalist. So it is written in an accessible way. We provided the information, and she turned it into something that's far more readable um, and interesting, I think, than something we'd have done ourselves. It's been sent out to all our members, partners, current and potential funders and also potential members so we've sent it quite quite far and wide and we're using it obviously to tr attract membership uh, and build and grow our organization and it shared some key facts about our region so we we pulled together some of the results across the region from the the customer services um, questionnaire that we do we do each year we've also um, built our website and social media so I look after the social media accounts, although I get help from other members. And we've got uh, Richard Lewis from Dudley Archives is now looking after the website. And we're sort of trying to grow that. We've got 520 followers on Twitter now, and we are starting to see uh, a sort of real growth in that area. We've also um, brought in someone called Catherine Seddon to help support the organisation. So she is working for us on a freelance basis just again to help us run the organisation as we, we take it forward to the next stage. So our key priorities for, for this year, really, are to develop another regional project. Obviously, we had good, great success with strong rooms, but what we really want to do is another project, this time formally led by Archives West Midlands, uh, and we'll really promote our collections across the region. So we're looking at the moment at potentially a project uh, around votes for women and possibly a partnership with the HE sector partner, so potentially uh, a small project to come through there. We're also going to continue promoting the Archives West Midlands and growing our membership. So we're actively sort of making approaches now on the back of our annual review, writing to specific organisations. We've all sort of collated details of who, who we'd like to sort of extend membership to, to again just grow and sustain the organisation. And we will be looking at developing a volunteer strategy across the region. It's something that we felt quite strongly about. We all use volunteers in our services, and we want to look at ways that we can do that really well, develop guidance uh, and policies, and perhaps bring volunteers together across the region. In addition, other priorities that we've got is to carry on promoting the importance of our collections regionally, so advocating, and we do that quite a lot through, through our social media. So I always actively retweet our, particularly our members or any archive services in our region, and I do try and focus it particularly on, on the West Midlands. We also support services uh, as they work towards achieving accreditation, 
Um, and we've had more, more members achieve accreditation in, in the last year. I think we've got about seven that are now accredited out of our membership and three have been re-accredited. So we make sure that we sort of celebrate and support members. Also looking at supporting workforce development. So we have run a, a training session on social media. We're also looking at um, potentially one on the GDPR regulations and we're working together on digital preservation. And digital preservation is sort of the really key area that we're focusing on at the moment because we recognise that it's a huge challenge for all of us uh, and we've kind of concluded that we can't do it on our own at all. So we're wanting to really maximise the skills and expertise in the region. Um, we've been fortunate again to get a grant from the National Archives. So in 2016, we managed to achieve just under 1,800 um, from TNA which was match funded by Worcestershire Archives and Archaeology Service. And that was to conduct a survey across our members. And what we wanted to establish was the readiness. So we wanted to look at what were current practices, what existing policies and guidance did services have, what were their skills, what were their knowledge gaps, and what, are, what did members want? What, you know, were they interested in working collaboratively? Were there any barriers that they might foresee in doing that within their organisation? And the results that we've, we've had from that survey, which we did in the summer, have shown that there is a real need for practical training, and people really do want templates for policies and guidance, and are looking for investment to increase capacity. So we're all doing it on a, basically a zero budget, and also doing, trying to do it alone, and people do want to work together uh, to try and move that forward. What we've been doing in the last couple of months is looking at testing some systems um, and seeing whether we can invest in a platform to provide a secure pub public access to digital archives. So three services have tested Preservica in the region and more services are going to take part in that towards the end of the year. What we're going to do then is share the results of those, that testing um, and have a, a meeting focused on digital preservation for our members early in 2018. And we're looking at securing, potentially securing additional funding to move to the next stage. We've got another service, Warwickshire Archives, who are looking at Archivematica, and we're looking at them to sort of share their learning and their experience of using that system. So we're not focusing on just one solution. But what, what's becoming really, really clear is that Archives West Midlands is offering us a model to share potentially the costs of digital preservation. There are advantages of coming together in that the more members that um, would use a project, the cheaper it gets in terms of being able to um, procure it. But also a supportive community, so we've been able to share our experiences of testing the project. So we feel that collaboration is a really sustainable way forward for services um, and it's something that we're, is being, you know, working really well in the rest of West Midlands and is, I think, quite a success story for us. So really, just to finish off, all I would say is just mention our annual review. Please do look at it. Um, it's got some um, interesting insights into what we've achieved in our first year. It's also available on our website and please do follow us on Twitter because I really want to grow our presence. And thank you.